Yeah, hi there, this is uh, TuxAuto.com again. Welcome on my video channel. Today I want to start a project, and that is uh, migrating my OpenMediaVault NAS, which uh, now uses a ZFS file system on uh, six hard drives with uh, four terabyte each to a newer system or bigger hard drive, and that will be only three hard drives but also with uh, 16 terabyte each. So usually I will start that on a virtual machine to try out the options I have. And uh, that is what I want to do here. And in the same way, on the same time, I can show you how easy it is to install ZFS system on an open v Media Vault NAS server. So let's just begin. Okay, I'm here on my uh, Proxmox uh, environment, but um, nevertheless, uh, if you do it on a virtual box or on a VMware enterprise workstation, uh, it's up to you, but I prefer the uh, Proxmox way, but there's no any preferences doing this uh, besides the fact in doing this or trying that out in a virtual environment. So what we do is create a virtual machine, give it an ID, and of course a name. Go to next. And here what I prepared already is that I loaded up the uh, ISO image for Open Media Vault up to the uh, Proxmox server, makes things a little bit faster and easier. Okay, next one. That we can leave the uh, default settings, uh, 32 gigabyte of this size for just a plain open media vault should be enough. So we go to next. Here in the course we go up to six. We want to give it a little bit more power, but that should be enough for a NAS system. Memory, I give it a eight gigabyte and uh, that we can leave on the default settings. Okay, place NAC, finish, and then the virtual machine will be created. We go to that virtual machine and it's telling me that the guest is not running. Okay, we start now, and then it will boot the Open Media Vault ISO, which you normally would place on a USB flash drive and boot it via Ventoy, which I did already in an article too. Okay, we stick to English. Now let's stay to United States. American Im English, okay. Getting the modules and uh, additional components. Then it will try to configure the NIC via DHCP which works out in my environment, of course. Host name, name will take OMV test. Since I'm here in my Proximus environment, I do the domain ending LAN. We choose a root password. Of course, it can be pretty simple here because I destroyed the machine after the project. Wait and see, it gets a time. Now stick to Eastern time, okay. Then I will fast forward this uh, for installing the system. Now we have to choose a mirror, stick to the defaults, which will get additional packages from the mirror and uh, installs them. Okay, install the bootloader. Okay, we're ready to boot for the first time the new installed system. Okay, since we got our IP address uh, via DHCP, we uh, should uh, note this IP address which we can use to connect to the Open Media Vault for the first time. Uh, 
And here when you log in, default is admin and open media vault. Okay. Oh, seems like I spelled that wrong. Okay. Like this. Never. Okay, that's the first time booted. And probably here there are a lot of uh, update packages available. So we do an update of those packages first. And uh, since it takes a quite a while, I do a fast forward. Now we do a reboot after the updates uh, were installed. And then we do two things, that is change password. And we go into network because that's a server, it should have a fixed IP address. So we change that one from DHCP to static. Have to define netmask and the gateway. And last but not least, the DNS server. Okay, let's check that, that I don't have a typo somewhere. That looks good, okay. Do a save, and then we have to update the configuration. Wait a little while, but then the server will not be reachable under this address, of course. So we have to change that to the new address I just configured. Okay, now we can log in with the uh, new credentials. Okay, that looks uh, pretty good for the first login. Okay, what we now have to do is to log in via SSH. because now we have to insert a command line like this to install the OMV extra functions to this installation. Okay, do that. I think it's on a Mac is command shift R. And now we have here under system, you see here the OMV extras doesn't keep the language. Why? Okay, we go into system, got the OMV extras and the plugins. Now we go to OMV extras, uh, plugins, sorry, and go down to kernel, because, okay, it works with the standard kernel, but uh, I made the uh, best experience with installing the Proxmox kernel, so we get this plugin. And here we got the new section kernel where we can install a new kernel, but uh, we might as well, just for safety reason, boot after this update and uh, we'll fast forward again. Okay, here we are, log in again. And now, as I mentioned under system, we can now choose a different kernel. And this time I want to install a Proxmox kernel, not the newest one. I picked this one, which should make uh, not that problems like the uh, 6.14. That's, by the way, the same kernel I'm running on my main uh, Proxmox machine which is also running a ZFS uh, file system. And now as you can see here that the uh, Proxmox kernel is the default kernel to boot. 
And that is what we do right now. We boot again. Okay, now I go over to the uh, Proxmox host, go to hardware, go to add a hard disk, uh, make it 64 gig for testing purposes. Do another and the third one. Then we switch back to um, Open Media Vault and go to System and uh, Plugins. There we go down to the bottom and pick the Open Media Vault ZFS plugin and install that one. That will take a while, so make him fast forward because it will generate a module for the kernel. Okay, we got an end of line. And now we go to storage, and here we got the new ZFS plugin and uh, settings for creating pools and so on. And uh, just go to disk. Now he has the uh, three disk I generated in uh, Proxmox. So now we can generate a pool, add a pool, just name it as you like. That is now a RAID Z1 pool that is uh, comparable with a RAID 5 system. Um, if you want to have uh, more devices for parity, you have to choose Z2 or even uh, Z3, but then you need, of course, more hard drives. Okay, pick the devices. That is pretty automatic here. The mount point you can leave empty, then it will mount on the root file system with the name pool. Or, of course, you could enter here a mount point to mount it to a different director of your preference. Normally we would set compression here, but probably in this little file system doesn't make sense at all. We hit save and wait for changing in configuration. And uh, now we have a ZFS pool here with the uh, 123 gigabyte of uh, storage and one uh, hard drive for parity. And that is all there is to it. Okay, that was the base for my uh, project uh, migrating my ZFS pool on my real open video open media vault NAS to larger hard drives. As you could see here, it's pretty easy to try it out in a virtual environment like here Proxmox, so we can play around. And you can even make snapshots uh, from the different installation steps I took if you are unsure, so you can repeat them after maybe an error occurred or something like that. I will now define a second pool, fill uh, the first pool with data, or at least part of the da original data. In this case, that are my block photos. And then I will try out the migration from one pool to another via ZFS send and receive. Okay, if you have any questions to this, you might as well place them in the comment or in the comments of the corresponding blog post. And uh, if this video was a little bit helpful to you, might think about placing a like in the, on the video. And it surely would help the channel if you subscribe. Then, but then don't forget to hit the bell so you got a notification every time I upload a new video. Okay, that was my little project, let's say on installing ZFS file system on an open media vault NAS system. And all I have to say is till the next time, ciao, tux ocher.